Welcome back. Let's keep working on our Hogwarts Artifacts Online project. Up until now, we have completed Artifact CRUD, Wizard CRUD, Artifact Assignment, and User CRUD. Now we only have one open issue left, User Authentication and Authorization. As an anonymous user, I want to log in so that I can perform privileged operations. We know that we need to authenticate users and prevent unauthorized access to our application. But first, let's review the API documentation. To log in, the client needs to send a username and a password as parameters to the server side. Well, in this case, we're using something called HTTP basic authentication. So actually, the two parameters, username and password, they're stored in the authorization request header. If the authentication is successful, then the server will send back this response. True, 200, user info, and JSON web token. The data has two parts, user info, which has username enabled, rows and ID, and a JSON web token, or JWT. The client will then retrieve this token and use this token for subsequent HTTP requests. We'll talk more about JWT later on. On the other hand, if authentication fails, then this is the response. False, 401, if you remember 401 means authentication failure. Message is, Username or password is incorrect. Data is bad credentials. OK, so in summary, the client calls this login endpoint with credentials saved in the authorization request header. And for the heavy path, a JWT token will be returned from the server side. By the way, the link to this API documentation can be found below this video. Next. Let me toggle over to the slides. What you will learn from the next couple of videos includes username and password authentication against a database using HTTP basic authentication and Sprint Data GPA. JSON Web Token, or JWT, generation and validation using Sprint Security OAuth 2 resource server. Role-based authorization or access control. Last but not least, authentication and authorization exception handling. Before we move on, let me clarify the meaning of two important terms, authentication and authorization. I have used these two terms many times, but I have not formally defined them. So what is authentication and what is authorization? In a nutshell, authentication is asking, who are you? Authorization is asking, what are you allowed to do? Authentication is how we verify the identity of who is trying to access a particular resource. A common way to authenticate users is by requiring the user to enter a username and password. Once authentication is performed, we know the identity and can perform authorization. So once a user is authenticated, authorization is determining who is allowed to access a particular resource. Sometimes people say access control instead of authorization. Please note that the word authorization is often overloaded in other places. People even use authentication and authorization interchangeably. That is not correct. Now that we understand the two terms, let's briefly review the requirements of the project so that you understand the two terms better. Here are the requirements of our Hogwarts Artifacts Online. Feel free to pause the video and look at each user story. The link to this file can be found below this video. As you can see here, in the artifact management component, anonymous users or guest users means no authentication is needed, can view artifacts, 
but only logged in users or authenticated users can add, update, and delete artifacts. In the wizard management component, all operations require authentication. For user management component, only users with the admin role can perform those operations. So that is authorization, right? Except the last user story, login. In this project, we will use Spring Security Framework. Spring Security provides comprehensive support for authentication, authorization, and protection against common exploits. It is the de facto standard for securing Spring-based applications. Next, I will use a diagram to illustrate the authentication process we will implement for Hogwarts Artifacts Online. Let's go to the slides. You probably use login every day, but what happens behind the scenes? There are many different ways to authenticate users. As I said before, one of the most common ways is by validating a username and password submitted by the user. So a user calls the API endpoint, in our case, localhost 8080 slash API slash v1 slash users slash login with their username and password using the HTTP basic authentication. Spring Security provides comprehensive support for HTTP basic authentication with a username and password against a database. If the authentication is successful, the server will generate a JSON web token or JWT and send it back to the user in this format per our API documentation. The user can then include this access token in subsequent HTTP requests to access protected API endpoints. You probably use an access token every day without realizing it. The single sign-on feature widely uses GWT. And again, Spring Security offers built-in support for this GWT encoded bearer token authentication. I want to emphasize that access tokens are credentials, so treat your tokens like passwords. Now let's zoom into the two activities, or two parts. Part one, basic authentication, and part two, JWT generation, and see more details. You will see how username and password login works within Spring Security. Now this time, I will use the UML sequence diagram to walk you through the process. I color-coded each object in this sequence diagram. Green means Spring Security objects, and red means objects we defined or need to define. In part one, basic authentication, when the username and password are submitted with the login API call, before the control flow reaches the controller class, an authentication provider object intercepts it and retrieves the real Hogwarts user. In other words, Hogwarts user with correct password from the database based on the submitted username, in this case, John. The authentication provider then compares the submitted password with the password in the retrieved Hogwarts user object. If they match, authentication is successful. Otherwise, authentication fails. So it's pretty straightforward. Then how does the user retrieval happen? It turns out that the responsibility of retrieving a Hogwarts user belongs to the user service object. It talks to the user repository to find a Hogwarts user object by username and puts this Hogwarts user object into my user principal wrapper object. Finally, the my user principal object is returned to the authentication provider for password comparison. You may wonder, how does a Spring security object like authentication provider communicate with an object defined by us or by developers? In other words, how does the green talks to the red? To make this happen, there must be a rule or contract. The rule here is that the developer implemented user service class 
must implement an interface from the Spring Security Framework. The returned value, Hogwarts user, must be wrapped in a class that implements an interface from Spring Security. Don't worry, you will see them in the code. Just a spoiler here. Next, let's move on to part two. JWT generation. Once the basic authentication is successful, the API call gets to continue. It will reach the controller class, authcontroller. Here, we need to create a JSON web token for the user. In this project, JWT provider is responsible for creating a token. The auth service then gets the user information like ID, username, enabled, and roles from this authentication object and return them to the controller who will serialize them into JSON and send back to the client side. By the way, here, this authentication parameter represents a logged in user. It has all the information about the logged in user. That's why auth service can create login information based on the authentication. Please note, in this project, we're not just returning the GWT, but the user information as well, like ID, username, enabled, and roles. So here's my plan. Let's implement this sequence diagram step by step. First, part one, then part two. I will explain some concepts like HTTP basic authentication and GWT along the way. See you in the next video.